I don't, I don't think Gerald's been in here now. Gerald has gone to work for us in southern Colorado area, and that area out there is helping us. Gerald has worked for a packer before, and I asked him, what's the difference between a spade heifer and a steer when they come in? And he said, the re only reason that they object to a spade heifer in the plant, it takes one more man there during the slaughter operation. When they operate and make the incision to spay the heifer, he said that hide will stick to the carcass and a man has to stand there and slice that loose where the scar tissue is. And I asked him if that was the only difference and he said yes, that's virtually all the difference there is. It does take one more man in the plant when they're slaughtering spayed heifers because they've got to make that extra whack and cut that hide loose where the incision was made. This was something that I didn't know. But this is the only, yes, back. Well, I don't know where that would fall. I would guess, unless, like you said, excessive brands they're talking about. Well, I don't think one incision would make that much difference. Unless she was already branded, you know, two or three brands and so forth like this, then it probably would, it could. I wouldn't guess that that would make any difference in your hide credit. I, I don't know. We'd have to ask someone in Slaughter Cattle Division about that. I might mention that a lot of these other people in these other areas are gonna be talking about this backgrounding program. Primarily up to this time, I've handled the most of it because I helped put the thing together to start with. We're gonna start putting it back to those people in the area and they'll be negotiating in their own area on backgrounded cattle in that area. I know out west some of those people are looking at this thing thinking about cattle coming off of grass next fall. And they're wanting to know what we can do with it. A lot of them are wanting to come off at heavier than 800 pounds. And we did talk about it to one fella, and he said, I would make a flat offer of the fat futures the day we make the sale. In other words, next, I looked, glanced at it yesterday, and it was around $62 for October delivery if they ran up around 850 or 900 pounds. Now, we haven't worked out any details. That was just an offer that the man made. Is there much of that gonna be considered? I mean, as time goes on, will there be many of them coming off of grass that are gonna wanna market at that weight? Probably not in this area. It'll be a consideration out in the West. I'd like to, Ron, I'd like to have some of the people that I work with, Randy Owens over here. Randy and John take a lot of our cattle from this area. I think pretty everybody here probably knows Randy, maybe some of the people from Minnesota and Wisconsin may not. You got anything you'd like to say, Randy? Arlen Hansen. Arlen runs the point up at Columbia. I'd like to have Arlen stand up. Is there anything you'd like to add here, Arlen? I mean, this is a time for input, whether it's to me or to the crowd or, or whoever it is. Arlen and I communicate often enough, we pretty well Get our talk out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah, we've always used these. I mean, the futures have used us up to this point, and I feel it's time we start using the futures now. And I think this is a tool that we can do it with, maybe. I don't know, we may have to change and switch and do a few things different here, but it's a sure tool to use. Yes. There couldn't be an adjustment. Like one old fella told me when I was just a kid, he said, you can buy a gold dollar too high. And this could be the position we're in. We better worry more about where we're at today and can we keep that rather than if we can get that extra nickel or dime out of it right at this point. Ron, I'd like for you to say a few words here. Ron works on the program in North Dakota. I think good share of you people know Ron, probably.
big cattle companies where we don't get the cattle back. If we need to sell to our independent feeders, those, uh, when they're fat, they come back through the organization and get two shots at us. Uh, that I'd like to see a lot more of, and I'd like to see the people in the country encourage our home office, I guess you would say, for a lot more of it. And uh, basically, this price is getting our stabilizing these markets on this 75, 77 cent calves. Well, I got a plan that Glenn knows about there too. I won't say anything about it. <laughs> uh, we got to take a hard look at that. Everybody should take a hard look at that and quit thinking about selling calves or two bits more than your neighbor. Because he said it here today if you sell calves for 75 cents on 80 cent markets, that's a lot better than selling them for 50 on a 45 cent market. Uh, we've got to stabilize this because this tonnage of beef is going to catch up with us. It's cheap, cheap feed and uh, they're feeding them to heavier weights. Uh, like Ruben just said here, he sold uh, 1,200 pounds. Well, they're beefalo wool, right? Beefalo, uh, Herford bulls. And uh, they go back to the feedlots. You can about imagine how big they're going to get. And everybody's doing it, getting bigger weights. We've got to look out for that. And the only way we can do it is do it ourselves. I think Ron has brought the point home pretty well there. You talk about big cattle, I still remember the last down market. I was in the home office in the beef department. A fellow called from out Crest in Iowa, right east of Corning there. He says, I got about 22 head of steers I want to go somewhere with. I said, that's fine, and talked to him about it a little bit. Well, he said, just go ahead and ship them. And I says, well, have you got a neighbor, anyone close there that we can make a load with so the transportation will work? He hesitated a little bit, and he says, you won't need any others. And I said, just a minute, what are these going to weigh? Well, he says, I've been holding for a better market. And he says, they're going to weigh about 1,700 pounds. Would you believe 2050 is what they averaged, and there was only one plant that had a high enough rail in it that we could get them slaughtered in? I mean, this is the route we went before, and I don't think we need any more of that. He was right, 21, 22 head was all we'd get in a truck. But I think these people, and again going back to this, that's the point I brought out here on our 725 pound heifer and our 800 pound steer. I think that's enough. If we put those things in the feedlot, backgrounded cattle going in at 900 pounds, we're gonna go to coming out with heavy carcasses again. If we put a backgrounded cattle in there at 800 pounds, we'll come out with the right weight. Erlen Strive back here. Erlen runs the point over in Independence, Wisconsin. I'd like for Erlen to talk about some of the things. And I heard some comments said back to me over the phone the other day. Erlen says the first time he ever had all the price he wanted on cattle out there in his area. Now the sheep are going down the road after they got this last price. And uh, 
Yeah, as Erlen brought out, the people in that area are going to try for a real movement here before Christmas, before this thing, before we relax for the holidays. I guess next week we've got those scheduled, what, for the 21st, I think, was when we're going to attempt to move those. I need to spend a lot more time in Wisconsin and Minnesota, and I intend to as we get this program going. I might bring a point out here as an example. I went up to the dairy department and asked them the amount of milk that we move out of Minnesota and Wisconsin. I got the average production figures per cow up in that area and divided it out. Then I decided that half of those must be bull calves and roughly 30% of them at least would go to veal and leaving what was left over in NFO members' hands in Minnesota and Wisconsin, there are 40,000 Holstein steers every year up there. And this is something that we've got to work on, is to get those put together in such a way that we can use them. If we can put those together in load lots, we can get those fellows a price. I talked to guys in to it up at the Fergus. Is there anyone here from Minnesota at the meeting now? At the Fergus Falls collection point last fall, we scheduled a Holstein movement up there, and they had something over 300 head. We got six cents more than we had ever been able to get for Holsteins in that area before, because we put numbers together. As Randy can tell you here, there's plenty of people want a Holstein steer if they can get them in, in lo load lots or in such a way that we can afford to transport them and they can use them. There's a market for them, but we're gonna have to work and figure a way and get the people to put them together so that we can move them. I see Max Freeman sitting back here. I think Max runs a point over there. You want to say anything here, Max? Make a few comments? Anyone else that I've missed here that I didn't recognize? I don't even know all the people I'm working with. If you talk to me on the phone, I'll probably recognize you. But yes, Oscar. <laughs> uh, uh, what's your first name again? Glenn. Uh, uh, Glenn did say he, d he would like to have some input. And I'm just wondering at this, at this time if you folks do agree with me in this kind of input. The, in the kind of input I would like to see when I do pledge to, did, to do this myself and I hope you do the same. I do make sense to you. It's no use going uh, many, many years back when I had the opportunity to be involved in what, what, what was the set in 1973. And they tell us that's true. $75 sounds a heck of a lot better than what would you give me or telling anybody I could get more when we ourselves made an 130 calf contract and delivering on November 6th, I believe, Arlen, uh, quote me, it's got to be within days, and benefiting $15,000 and 130 cash. That's money, isn't it? And that's what we profit, profited in 1973 over some of our neighbors and friends would start the dollar is on the field. I do make it a little bit more shorter. I do offer myself, and I'm at this time, I actually am not done, but talk is cheap, and I don't like to talk a lot. I rather see action, and I let, rather do something about it. What I'm blunt saying, folks, we've done it before, didn't we? And a lot of you were involved, and those of you which weren't involved, get your feet wet this time. Because we could be all over it, wouldn't be said. And what this time we see is all over, it's going to be for all, for once and for all. That means over for all. So we can live with those kind of prices. Uh, we just delivered some cash around in one visit 14 days ago, three weeks ago. And we can pay, uh, pay our bills. Two weeks ago. 
and I would like to have it that way. So uh, what I'm saying is, um, also Mr. Hansen, and most of you know me, I know you, but how would that sound to you? It makes sense to me. If we do go home, and instead of just saying, well, we know it's working, we make it working. And by making working it, I put my cattle down today, the 1979 crop. And then I got something to show to my neighbors and to my friends. And the same token, we should be, if you agree on that, to me it doesn't make a difference. I can do the job, I believe I am capable to do the job as, as individual. Those of us who think we, we can't do it alone, we should pair up in a pair. And go to our neighbor, if we can't do it at the month we're leaving, then we do go from farm to farm and we say, well, listen, Mr. John Doe, this is what we got to offer. It makes sense to me. Here are my, for example, my 170 calves. Uh, and I, 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 at this time, I would just make it plain simple. How do you spell it? Spell your name and go from there on. Well, as we do go on, some questions will be asked. But the fact is, again, that I can prove my cows are on contract, and that's the step number one. Otherwise, if you only tell them a progressive program, and you got to doubt yourself in your mind, you are not fooling anybody than yourself. Isn't that the truth? And in order of not fooling anybody, we have to be an example. And I don't want to be a nice guy, or, or whatever they want to call me. I want to get the job done, and so do you, don't you? We had it once before, and that was 1973. But who in that town needed NSO at that time? And those kind of prices, 102 percent parity, not just parity. But it didn't stay there a little long. <coughs> so why don't we make it stay all the time? And only with our production, only with mine and your production, we can make this in a success, not with anybody else. What was been said that I am certain it's not the number of head and tonnage and saving and that's all good. There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if that production is not going, by the way, I told you I'm a Dutchman and I originally do come from Germany and I'm proud to be, uh, be a, <coughs> uh, in other words, I am a citizen and I'm glad to be a citizen. But you don't find a sales farm in Germany. Uh, Clint, do I go too long? No. I had uh, my brother, I do have one brother left, but him and his wife and two children were over this summer, and they did like the United States, particularly in the month of June and July. But as they saw us, we were working and going, <coughs> they just couldn't understand. So I took them from farm to farm, or as a matter of fact, in four states in the United States, and it just happened to also want to see like those fat cattle. And uh, quite a few of, of uh, you know Long's Law, so therefore he got these cattle, and I took them to that place, and I told them the, the I showed him the cattle, the purple anchor cross, the English breed, and he saw those rascals, and then of course he also wanted to know the price. And it happened that Mr. Wall was not home at that day, and his wife was there, and I said, why don't you ask me, ask her. She's the landlord lady. He did ask her. And in Sherman, you see the numbers backwards compared to English. So instead of saying 57 cents for the steer, she said 75. Okay, he wrote down 75, 800 pounds, figure it out, good $600. She said, you know, for that price, I would take them all. Even with 75 cents. And here all we're asking is just cost of production. Somebody wants to tell me it can't be done. Well, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. So therefore, if that, if our new stuff, so important, and again, if I don't look that way, but I, I never would wish anybody potatoes and coffee and po coffee and potatoes. That was the thing. And not even in a drop of uh, uh, fat or butter. It was always 
water, either either roast potato, or pelt potato, or you just name it and twist potatoes. But they taste it good. In my opinion, they, they, uh, uh, I don't wish anybody to it. I don't believe it when somebody tells me that uh, you can't get the price, I can't get the price. I know better than that. So if that stuff stays away from those places where one wouldn't get me, it's going to go the, uh, the right way. By right way, as Mr. Hansen did say, collector's farm. If you don't understand collector's farm, I would like to leave it with you here today. It means working together, just like we do work together, husband and wife, doing things in unity. And that's what we have to do, is putting our production together <coughs> in unity, not looking at that cut and pick a nickel or a dime or whatever have you. Uh, I, I, don't you think, Ronnie, uh, no, either are you working or I'm working, but I think that we're through this. We got through this. Uh, we're through it. You can see it wider. And by, by making it a total success, I'll bet you, if we would start in one county, and by the way, we moved tonight, in Wichita, North Dakota, uh, Mr. Hansen was introduced to quite a few, and it's no use bragging, but I only can tell you that we moved in 73 in that collection for 15,000 head of cattle. And I, I'm sure we can do that again. So, pairing up and seeing and going from <coughs> place to place, just nothing to it. Uh, but I get those hands up which are willing to put that, I'm willing to do that right here today. We got here, okay, yeah, get up. Uh, does that make sense, folks, if we put produ our production down first? Then I take that same contract here, and then you choose yourself, as what's been said today, you choose the month, uh, uh, the, uh, the weight, whatever have you, that really doesn't change anything. The only thing we would, which will change is we put our friendship, ask if ask the wife for this production. That's the only friend which I got, my wife and my production. Those are my friends. If I put that down in paper, and then we do approach our seller members. How many of you are willing to do that? Are, are all of you cattle producers? Okay, well, I, I would say we do have a good 90%, but not 100%. Now, that's what we're going to, I, I, I pledge, I pledge that, that, that this is what we're going to be doing in North Dakota. That's all I got. Anybody, anybody got any questions? I don't have much to offer besides taking that production away from the old system, which is just when Flynn also, and I, I, Flynn, there's nothing wrong when you mention a price, when you mention a market, but the hell with that market. There were a lot of markets where it went out of price, and the price which we want is cost of production. Mm -hmm. Oscar makes it pretty plain. I might state that Oscar's idea is very valid. 90% of the cattle that were signed in the state of Montana were signed with two men up and down the road making individual contacts. That's the way most of those cattle were put together and we moved about 22,000 of them out of Montana this year. They've got a different, little different situation than we have in our area. I would suppose that the ranches, each one has more numbers on it. I mean, when you sign one, you get more production probably. But it sure does work, just like Oscar said. I mean, up and down the road, that's the way they're put together. Joyce Riles and Don M. Sandy, they're both here at the convention. And you ought to meet with those guys and talk to them at some time during the convention and see the job they've done and what they're looking forward to. They're looking for more people to put to work. I mean, they feel that they've got the ball rolling up there. They want some more good people to put to work to help them put those cattle together this year. Of course, Joyce is more or less going to be moving out of the Montana area. He's going to be supervising the whole Mountain States region. And he's looking for people to help him put that production together out there and see what they can do. But right here, what Oscar's talking about, if we'll go home, put our own production on, go up and down the road and talk to our neighbors and explain this thing to them, 
It's not pie in the sky, it's already here. All we got to do is take it. I think Randy here would be willing to contract calves right today at some of these prices. I know his dad is. I mean, we're already talking about it. And we're moving cattle, our assignees, other people. And uh, as Ron brought out here, he objects to the cattle moving to the larger operators and that out of the hands of the organization, and I do too. And this is one of the points I brought out. If we could get our members to place their orders in time so we can channel those cattle to them. But when we've got a member on the other end saying, sell these cattle, they're at a price that I can live with, and I want them moved, we've got to move them. If our members aren't willing to take them, we've got to move them to wherever we can at that point. And this is what we need to talk about, is getting our people to place their orders, as Ron says, so they'll go back through the organization and help us price these cattle all the way. That's what this thing is about. We're going to eventually have to price fat cattle here if we're ever going to maintain this thing. And that's why we put together this backgrounding program. It's another step on toward that final weight. I don't think some of you people have heard me say that the fat cattle people can ever price fat cattle today, the small individual producer. Too many of those cattle are already owned by the people that are going to sell them across the retail counter that are in the feedlots today. And they don't have to make any money at that level, and some of them don't even want to. They'll use that tax write-off at the feedlot against their profit that they make at the retail level. And unless we make them pay for those cattle that they're putting into the feedlot, they never will help us. Once we do that, they'll help us price fat cattle. That's the way it is. As one guy said, as long as they can steal the cattle or the feed or both, they won't help us price fat cattle. And this is the position they're in. They're not stealing the cattle now, they're still stealing the feed, you might say. And this is the way the large feedlot has survived. They've stole one or the other or both as years have gone on. I might, that's about all I have, and anyone else here got any more input? If not, we will have another meeting here on Thursday, and I'd like for you people to circulate around and talk to the people. We'll have Dave in here and talk to you some more. Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock, we'll have another meeting right here, and I'd like to see this room full. And let's talk about it. Let's put these cattle on production. Put our production on the line, like those people did out there in the Dakotas, and get this thing going. That's what we're here about. I think maybe Gerald is sitting here as the national director. I think maybe he, you got any words you want to say, Gerald?
<laughs> I see another fella just stepped in back there that helps us in our program in South Dakota, Tom Blake. Tom, you got anything to talk about in our cattle program? We share it, Tom, with the sheep division. Most of you probably know Tom as being mainly a sheep man, but he is helping us with our feeder program and doing some rep and force and helping put some movements together in South Dakota. Unless someone else had something more to add, well, I think we'll call this, adjourn this for today. We'll meet back here then again at one o'clock on Thursday. And let's fill it up and talk about it and put these things on contract.